I was enjoying my perfect Friday night watching my favorite YouTuber's latest video when it got interrupted by a phone call. Tessa, the cops arrested me! Dress as my mom and come bail me out! That was Katie, my annoying cousin. She's the biggest troublemaker I know, which is why my aunt sent her to live at my house, in hopes that we could help change her attitude. Poof! So now, I have to sneak into mom's closet and borrow some of her clothes. Hmm. How do I apply makeup to look older? Ugh. That'll have to do. So, officer, what trouble's she in this time? She vandalized a car. Not me, mom. Blame the dumb car that got in my way. Jeez. If I were really Katie's mom, I would let her rot in jail until she came to her senses. I was about to lead Katie out of there when a boy grinned at me and said, Madam, can you bail me out too? Sorry, but no. You're not my problem. Okay, well, then can you at least give me your number? I spotted Katie frown at him, then she pulled on my arm. Let's go home, Mom. Katie, can't you grow up? I can't cover for you forever. You'll do it, else I may just accidentally slip out your little secrets to your parents. Ugh. That threat sure is getting old. Okay, so I didn't bail out Katie out of choice. You see, she has something over me. The thing is, I have a passion for baking, but my parents think this is a waste of time. I knew they'd never knowingly pay for my cooking classes, so I told them I needed money to join an extra study class. I know it sounds bad, but I did apply to work at a coffee shop bakery so I could pay them back while also gaining experience. But then Katie discovered my secret, and now she's using it to control me. <sighs> then, just when I thought things couldn't get any worse, I arrived home to find my parents waiting up for me in the living room. Tessa, you were out partying, weren't you? Why do you keep on disobeying us? And is that my dress? Why can't you be more like Katie? She's really improved her grades. I turned around to see that Katie was nowhere to be seen. She must have quickly escaped through the back door to her room. What a minx. But my parents still believed she's the golden girl. Poof. It's rubbish, of course. The good grades she brought home were all by cheating. If it weren't for Katie knowing my secret, I so would have exposed her by now. Actually, besides Katie, there's also Celia, my best friend, who also knows about this. She may be a hothead, but when it comes to my secrets... I know her lips are sealed. Hey, Tessa, you have to see this. Celia waved her phone in my face. Hang on, that was BitKit Bakes, my all-time fave YouTube channel. I'd been following this guy for ages. He was so talented. Oh, and he always wore this cute kitty mask. Look at his hands. They're so beautiful. And how I adore his warm voice. I bet he's really handsome, too. Celia is so smitten with boys. Ugh, it's Katie again. She's left her lipstick in the canteen and I've got to fetch it for her and take it to some cafe in town. This is ridiculous. I'm sure she could survive without her stupid lipstick for one afternoon. I walked into the cafe and spotted Katie sitting with two boys. Hmm, wasn't that the boy from the cop station? Turns out he's called Max and he's Katie's new boyfriend and the other guy is Cody. Both of them are college students. Hey, Tessa, you should stay for cake. Seeing as I was here, I may as well have something sweet, right? So I ignored Katie's eye rolls in my direction and joined them. The waiter brought some chocolate fudge cake over and, yum, it sure looked good. I took a forkful of it and, hmm, something wasn't quite right. This cake could use some salted caramel. Poof, a cake needs to keep its original flavor. If you add that to it, it'll be far too sweet. Oh, how rude. I was only voicing my opinion. Right at that moment, Celia phoned me. I just answered when she started screaming so loudly, and I had to hold my phone away from my ear. Tessa, Tessa, Tessa! Celia, is everything okay? I know how to impress the Big Kid Bakes guy. We must make him a DIY gift. A chocolate resin phone case. What do you think? Am I a genius or what? 
I noticed Max, Cody, and Katie all giving me strange looks. Jeez, this was so embarrassing. So I quickly hung up on Celia, then made my excuse to leave. Ugh. I liked it better when only I knew about Bitkit Bakes. I watch his videos every day and daydream about baking with him. But now Celia's obsession over him was kind of tiring me out. She texted me nonstop to ramble about him and dragged me into her silly fan projects. She even joined this online fan club of his, and they all talked about how fit he looks, how handsome he must be. Hello, does anyone here really care about cooking? At least work meant I had a break from Celia's mithering. Ugh, what was he doing here? He bought two cups of coffee, then asked to borrow my phone because his was out of battery. I reluctantly handed over my precious phone, but then I heard a ringtone. Max excitedly took his ringing phone out of his pocket and said, So now I have your phone number, cute girl. What? The cheek of him. I'm his girlfriend's cousin. Has he no shame? I gave him a dumbfounded look, but he just smiled, handed back my phone, and winked at me. I saved my number in your phone. Give me a call. Then he left. He just reached the door when I snapped out of my daze. The phone case. Our chocolate phone case. Why did he have it? It's one of a kind, and we've already sent it to Bitkid Bakes. Didn't we? I was about to run after him to clear this up when Katie appeared. Max, why did it take you so long to buy coffee? Then she stormed over to the counter as soon as she spotted me. Stay away from my boyfriend, or your secret goes parent public, okay? Katie glared at me and dragged Max away. Even though they were leaving, I could still hear her voice. Don't talk to that girl. I don't like her. Huh? What on earth? Who wants her boyfriend anyway? How irritating. One evening, I was lying on the couch and thinking about whether Max could really be Bitkit Bakes when Celia excitedly ran over. I have our mysterious idol's phone number. Oh no, here we go again. Celia was way too excitable sometimes. So a secret source that's in the fandom sent it to me. I wonder if this is his real number. You really believe that's Bitkit's number? Let's just give it a try. We have nothing to lose. It would be a lie to say I wasn't any tiny bit curious. So I entered the phone number, and as soon as I pressed the call, Max's name appeared on the screen. Huh? What's this? I quickly hung up and turned to tell Celia that it was just a fake number. If Max is really our idol, then I don't want Celia getting muddled up with my crazy cousin's love life. Celia just shrugged and said, It's okay, I'll find another way. Then she did that sticking tongue out concentration face of hers as she fiddled around on her phone. The next day, I got home from my shift feeling a little worn out, but Celia still wouldn't give me a break. She came right over and dragged me out somewhere. Where are we going? I asked, but Celia just kept silent. Then we stopped in front of a small white house. At that point, Celia said, My source says this is Bitkit Bake's home. We're about to meet the most amazing guy ever. Before I could react, Celia ran to ring the doorbell. And as soon as the door opened, standing in front of us were Max and Katie. Tessa, why are you here? You know him? Uh, um, this is Max, Katie's boyfriend. We were on our way to a friend's party, but it seems like we have the wrong house. Sorry for bothering you. Then I hurriedly pulled Celia's hand to leave. But Max stopped us. Oh yeah? Then you must have come to the right house. We're having a party, so join us. I quickly waved my hand to refuse, but Celia immediately said, That would be great! And then ignoring Katie's death stares, pulled me inside. Hmm. So turns out Max lives here with Cody and this guy called Trevor. I'll find out which of these three boys is our idol. Wait for it. Celia made up some excuse about loving their decor and wanting to see the rest of it for inspiration. Trevor, who seemed to like her, jumped at the opportunity to show her around. Meanwhile, I wandered into the kitchen to try and solve the Bit Kit Bakes mystery myself. Max was in there making himself an egg sandwich, but, oh my god, 
Had he never touched a whisk before? He's so clumsy. I don't think there would be much of the egg left in the bowl after he's done whisking. The kitchen counter was full of food for the party, so I decided to give them a hand. Hmm, let's see. I spotted a bowl of cookie mixture, which looked like it could use some special ingredient, so I reached for the jar of sugar. And as expected, a hand stopped me. But Cody? What are you doing? You use brown sugar for cookies, not white. You don't want to end up with a load of air pockets, do you? Yes, of course I knew that. And I also knew BitKid had once said those exact words in one of his previous clips. So, the anonymous idol is... Cody? But Max's phone case was the one we sent to our idol. And the idol's phone number that Celia found was also Max's. This was so confusing, and I needed answers. So I asked Max to go outside with me. You aren't BitKid Bakes, right? Why do you have that phone case? Oh, so you figured it out. Yeah, I know you sent it to Cody, so I intercepted it. I'm also the anonymous fan who gave Celia this address. It's fate, baby. You and me are meant to be together. Then he lunged towards me with outstretched arms. Oh my god, did he have tentacle arms or something? I couldn't escape from his grip. Then who should appear but, yep, Katie. She charged over, then pushed me, falling to the ground. Cody appeared and tried to stop the fight, but Katie's flailing arms knocked into him and caused his wrist to brush against the hot barbecue grill. I quickly went to check on Cody, but Katie just screamed out, I hate you! Then ran off with a shameless Max in hot pursuit. We then went to Cody's room to get the first aid box. Hang on, I recognize that mask. Don't worry, I'll keep your secret. But maybe this arm shouldn't be on screen for a while. Celia has, like, the best detective sense. <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> I'm thinking maybe a cute girl like you should wear the cat mask for the next few videos. What do you think? Are you sure? Your fans might speculate that the girl would have some kind of special relationship with you. Gosh, what am I saying? Wake up, Tessa. I should go. Right. There's something important waiting for me to handle at home. What a messy day. I couldn't carry on being under Katie's control any longer. I needed to confess all to my parents before she told them. Only, when I walked through the door, I heard these weird sounds coming from the living room. It was Katie bawling her eyes out on the couch. I ignored her and was about to go upstairs, but suddenly, she ran over to me and hugged me. Tessa, I'm so sorry for pushing you. I never meant for anyone to get hurt. I just really love Max, and it breaks my heart knowing he's such a womanizer. It's okay, but you seriously deserve way better than that jerk. So Katie and I made up, and she also promised that she wouldn't blab my secret to my parents. But I want to tell them the truth. I mean, I can't lie to them forever, right? And when they see how much baking means to me, they'll support me, right? Hey guys, so I entered a baking contest and invited my parents along. And guess what? I won the best newcomer prize. Eek! Better still, my parents congratulated me and told me that if I loved baking this much, I should follow my dreams. Oh, and I did use the prize money from the contest to pay them back. Cody's been a massive help. He's given me some great tips and actually, we've started dating. It's early days, but being with him makes me feel as happy as eating freshly made cookies. And as for Celia, well, she's still pretty convinced that Trevor's her idol. <laughs> One day I'll introduce her to the real BitKid Bakes. Soon. I arrived to find that he turned his bedroom into a mini theater, complete with scented candles and glistening fairy lights. He handed me a bowl of popcorn, and as we nibbled our way to the bottom... A carefully written letter came into sight that said, I've been in love with you ever since we were little kids. I've held back my feelings as I didn't want to ruin our friendship, but I can't deny them any longer. So, will you be my girlfriend? Ah, uh, how can he be so gorgeous and sweet and... Uh... Hey, dummy, you writing that cheesy stuff again? Just drop it already. Let's go prank Mr. Weasley. Okay, I'm coming. Hmm, 
If only what I wrote came to life. That's my best friend since childhood, Adrian. And as you can see, I have the biggest crush on him. But he only sees me as a bro. How ironic. I'm pretty sure if I confessed my feelings to him, he'd weird it out saying it's gross and stuff. So I just wrote my dream reality down in my novel and posted it on Wattpad. I even used a pen name. I couldn't risk Adrian finding out because, help, awkward alert. Anyway, it's easier this way, as I didn't want my parents to find out either. Yep, they weren't exactly supportive of my writing career. They wanted me to become a lawyer and take over the family firm just like my dad and his dad and blah, blah, blah. They made me study hard so I'd get into this prestigious law school, but it was just so dull and my heart just wasn't into it. One day, as I was sipping a macchiato at my favorite coffee shop, a group of girls walked in chattering excitedly about a book by the new author, Agatha C. Huh? Did I hear them right? Curious, I approached them and politely asked to see the book and... Oh. My God. It was my pen name right on the cover. I scanned through the first few pages and saw my words. Did this mean my book was published? Ouch! <laughs> so all this was real? So someone must have given my book to the publisher. Then it's gotta be Mrs. Jensen. Yes, she is the most respected writer and has loads of connections in the publishing industry. And lucky me, she was my mentor. Hi, Mrs. Jensen. I'm just calling to say I'm so grateful for what you've done for me. Cecilia, calm down. What are you talking about? The book, of course. Mrs. Jensen, my book got published thanks to you. Right? You're talking nonsense, young lady. I've barely started reading your book. So how could it have been published without my notice? What? So Mrs. Jensen didn't send it. Then who did? What do you mean you can't disclose their identity? It's my book! Miss, all I can say is that the person who brought it here claims to be the author of the book and chose not to reveal themselves by publishing it under a pen name. We, as the publisher, are legally bound by that, so I can't help you any further. What on earth was he talking about? Some random person stole my book and my pen name? I needed to prove they were both mine. Hmm. Aha! My Wattpad page! I tried to log into my account to show the director, but access denied? Oh, no, no, no. Someone must have messed with it. I was gonna use it to apply for a writing scholarship at college, and now it was all gone! As if that wasn't bad enough? I suddenly received an email from the writing competition I'd applied for, saying they denied my entry due to plagiarism of a Wattpad page. My Wattpad page! Ugh! So, bro, what's with the King Kong face? <laughs> oh, come on. You'll be less of an ugly duggling if you smile more. See? My gosh, could he just stop being like that for once? He made it very clear we had zero chance of being together. I got it, but he didn't have to rub it in my face like that. Fine, then. He'd never have to see me again. After that, I was determined to transfer to another school by the next semester one that would appreciate my writing talent. Somewhere like Eastwood Academy. It's a school full of literature records. Besides, I happen to know someone there. Lewis, the president of the Literature Club, and also an uprising star in the writer world. He's not only super talented, but incredibly nice too. He'd help me loads with my novels. But getting into that school would be tough. So every day, with my game face on, I buried my head under stacks of books while Adrian tried his best to distract me. One time, he told me to ditch class and go see the new Batman movie with him. I'd waited months for that movie. But no, I'd got to get my head in the game. Adrian didn't give up that easily, though. Only, right at that moment, the teacher appeared behind his back, yanked his ears, and gave him a ticket to the detention room. There went the Batman movie for him. <laughs> Another time, he came up with a prank for Mr. Jones, the P.E. teacher who made him run ten laps around the school for being late. But, sorry, the new Cecilia ain't got time for any of his childish stuff. So, when Adrian gave me Mr. Jones's phone and told me to hide it away, I just calmly handed it back to him. 
As Mr. Jones returned to the teacher lounge, he saw Adrian pouring some liquid into his tumbler, and that's how Adrian got himself two detention tickets. <laughs> After that, Adrian finally noticed that I had been acting differently. Cece, what is up with you? You keep ignoring me. Are we not friends anymore? Don't call me Cece. I'm still mad at you, okay? So, yeah, I want to transfer to Eastwood Academy. You know, Lewis's school. Oh, I see. Stop the act. I know it already. What? Did he know that I like him? Had he read my book? You like Lewis. Huh? Oh. Phew. But hang on. He really thought that? And was he... annoyed? Hmm. Interesting. Yep. In fact, he asked me out to dinner this Saturday. Really? Okay, then. I'll go with you. Can't trust this guy. And so, Adrian tagged along. He kept complaining about how I dressed up all pretty for Lewis, and how he had the nerve to be late. So, this is what he's like when he's jealous? Kinda cute, though. As Lewis arrived, he gave me a big hug, and I could feel Adrian's glare behind my back. <laughs> I sat close to Lewis and giggled at everything he said. He immediately got what I was trying to do, so he acted along, putting his arm around my shoulder and slightly stroking my hair. At one point, I even helped Lewis take a fallen eyelash out. And oh boy, Adrian couldn't help but lunge forward to separate us. Right at that moment, I heard a familiar voice from behind. Cecilia? And who are these young men? Lewis? Oh, hi, Mrs. Jensen. What a small world. You know Lewis, too? She didn't answer my question. Instead, she gave me a stern look, then dragged me outside. Cecilia, what are you doing with that no-good traitor? You mean, Lewis? Who else? He was heavily criticized and boycotted by the whole writer's community. I strongly suggest you give him a wide berth. Oh, my. I had no idea Lewis had such a bad reputation. He was always so kind to me, unless this was just an act because he wanted something. Like my novel! What if he was the one who stole it? This was not good. I rushed back to my table, quickly said goodbye to Adrian, then dragged Lewis away. Did you or did you not steal my book? What? No! Did Mrs. Jensen tell you that? Turns out, he used to be Mrs. Jensen's brightest mentee. Then he fell in love with her daughter, Demi, and they started dating behind her back. But then out of the blue, Demi suddenly broke up with him. Heartbroken, he cut all ties with her and her mom. But Mrs. Jensen took offense at this and had been on his back ever since. Gosh, now my head was spinning. I had no idea who to trust. Come to think of it, back in my mentee months, I also lost one of my manuscripts. I sort of ran into a dead end with that one, so I didn't do any digging, but it can't be a coincidence, right? It must have been Mrs. Jensen who stole them. No way! She's an incredible writer. Why would she do something like that? There's no better explanation for this. Don't worry. I've got a plan to expose her for the stinking thief she is. He then called the publisher, pretending to be some big-shot producer and asked them to arrange a meeting with the author of my stolen book, as he'd like to produce a high-budget movie based on it. Brilliant, isn't it? We arrived at the rendezvous in awesome disguises, and waited for this to play out. Her tension rose as the footsteps got closer. And then, standing at the door was... well, Mrs. Jensen! How could you? I trusted you! Cecilia? What's going on? Oh, drop the act! There's no movie. We only plan this trap to expose you for the book thief you are. Mrs. Jensen persistently denied our accusations and claimed she was only here because her daughter arranged a big surprise for her. Then Lewis and Mrs. Jensen started quarreling with each other and it all got messy. Stop! Both of you, please just stop! Demi, please explain yourself. I... it was me, okay? I stole your book, Cecilia. I saw it on Mom's desk. I'm so sorry. I don't understand. You don't need to steal someone else's hard work. You already are an excellent writer. No, Mom, I'm not. I've tried so hard to meet your expectations, but I just can't. I didn't want to disappoint you, so I stole your mentee's work. Including yours, Lewis. 
I was so ashamed of myself I couldn't face you after that. I'm so, so sorry. Louis let out a long sigh, then pulled Demi in for a hug and comforted her. Right at that moment, Adrian barged in and grabbed Louis's collar. You jerk! You were flirting with Cecilia a day ago, and now you're canoodling with another girl right in front of her? Adrian, stop! It's not what you think! Then I led him out of the restaurant. Turns out, he saw me leaving the house with Louis looking all weird, so he decided to follow us here. Um, the truth is, I don't have a crush on Louis. I was just trying to see if you think of me as more than just a friend. Um, well, I do like you. Like, a lot. But I don't want to risk our friendship. I can't bear the thought of not having you in my life, so I figured it'd be best to treat you as one of the guys. Guess what? I like you too, idiot. So, what do you say? Yeah, let's give it a shot. But you have to promise me if things don't work out, we'll still be friends, okay? Promise. Then we pinky swore just like when we were little kids. Only this time, he pulled me in for the best kiss ever. Finally, my book's mine again. And guess what? It has just become the number one bestseller novel according to the New York Times. Ah! This calls for a celebration. Adrian, will you help me with the guest list for the party? Sure, sweetie. Who do you want to invite? Now, let's see. There's my parents, who were so impressed with my independent work that they're now letting me follow my writing dreams. There's also Louis and Demi. Aw, they make such a cute couple. Demi decided to start over with her writing career, this time without the pressure from her mom. And with Louis's help, she's got a bright future ahead. And last but not least, Mrs. Jensen, who's now fully supportive of her daughter's career and her relationship with Louis. <laughs> I guess it's a happy ending for both my novel, me. It was a normal, boring day in the grocery store. I was stacking milk in the fridge when Camilla, my co-worker, came and said, Layla, you have to help me. I have this date tomorrow night, but I'm busy. Could you please go instead? Wait, what? I don't even know your date. Besides, I have a boyfriend. Lincoln, remember? Then she began explaining to me about this dating service, and she assured me it was 100% legit. It was mainly lonely men who just wanted some company. All I had to do was talk to them, and of course, there was a strict no-hugging or kissing policy. At the end of the date, they'd pay me. No thanks. No way I was going to do that. After my shift, I went home to see my landlady lingering in my doorway. She started yelling at me that I still owed her five months' worth of rent, and if I didn't pay it by the end of the week, she'd kick me out. I begged her to give me more time, but it was pointless. My god, what to do? Where could I get that much money on such short notice? Oh, wait a minute. What about Camilla's dating service? It looks like I was out of choices, so I called her and agreed to go on the date. So here I am, on my weird date night. I put the most basic dress I could find on. Oh boy, I sure felt nervous. I have no idea what to say and how to act. Oh, that must be him. My god, Camilla! How could she forget to mention that the guy was in his 50s? People would think he's my sugar daddy. Ugh! Keep it together, Layla. I couldn't back out now, as my home depended on it. So, I slowly approached the man. At first, he looked surprised. That figures, I mean, he was expecting Camilla. I explained the situation to him, and he wasn't mad or anything. He just smiled at me, and we started chatting. He's called Mr. Hall. He lost his wife two years ago. And ever since then, he's been feeling lonely and needed someone to talk to. So that's why he started using this service. Hmm. He was actually pretty easy to talk to. So the night quickly went by without any problem. After the date, he handed me an envelope and told me how grateful he was to me for listening to his burdens. I was itching to go home and open the envelope. But then he started going on about his heartbroken son. Suddenly, he was asking me if I'd talk to him. Obviously, I refused as this was a one-time thing to help out Camilla. Besides, I have a boyfriend. Speaking of which, he'll be so furious if he ever finds out about this. The next day, I paid the landlady two months' rent and assured her I'd have the rest with her soon. But to my shock, she just scowled at me and forced me to pay all at once. Well, guess where I am now. 
in a cafe, waiting for Mr. Hall and his son. Ugh. Oh, there he is. And that must be his son. Jeez, could he look any more annoyed? Hi, I'm Layla. Nice to meet you. Save it. I'm only here because he forced me to. So just let's get it over with. Layla, thank you for coming. This is my son, Leon. Please don't mind his attitude. Then Mr. Hall left us alone. Man, Leon was hard work. Any questions I asked him, he just shrugged or snorted. Then, when he finally spoke, he sarcastically said, So, Layla, I hope the money's worth it. What? How rude! Then he continued, You must be desperate. Don't you feel ashamed of yourself? Ah, he was the rudest person I'd ever met. But, yes, I was desperately in need of money. So I took a deep breath and started telling him about myself. When time ran out, I said goodbye to him and left. What an unpleasant experience, but at least that was the end of it, right? Wrong. As Mr. Hall asked me to meet him several more times. Who was I to argue? I mean, I needed the money. But Leon was getting on my nerves. As all he did was slouch in his seat, slurp his drink, and say nothing. So, it was down to me to do all of the talking. I began telling him all sorts of things. About my past, my family, and friends, and even about my future plans. And Leon just sat there listening to everything, supposedly. Luckily, it finally ended, and Mr. Hall paid me so I never had to meet Leon again. Because the last few weeks had been taken up with dating Mr. Hall and his son, I hadn't seen much of Lincoln. So, at the weekend, I invited him over to mine and cooked for him. We were sitting on the couch, hugging while watching a movie, when Lincoln said, in a serious tone, Layla, we need to talk. But then suddenly my phone rang. It was Mr. Hall. I quickly rushed to the balcony to pick up. He wanted me to be Leon's plus one at his eldest son's wedding, and he was willing to pay double? Ugh, that sounded awful, but besides rent, I also had to pay for college fees and food, and my measly income from the grocery store didn't come close to covering it at all, so I reluctantly agreed. When I returned inside, I asked Lincoln what he wanted to tell me. He hesitantly said that he had to go on a business trip for two weeks. Well, maybe it was for the best so I could go with Leon without worrying about my boyfriend. Ugh, I felt so guilty. I swear this would be the last time I was going to do this. Leon arrived to pick me up, and as soon as he saw my dress, he insisted I couldn't wear such an ugly thing. Ugh, he was so rude. I told him I had nothing else suitable, so he drove me to a dress boutique then told the staff to bring the most beautiful dress in store to try on. Oh my, it was stunning. I was overwhelmed when I saw myself in the mirror. Well, I definitely looked amazing in it. And Leon must be thinking that too, because he couldn't take my eyes off me. Ugh, it's such a shame, I can't afford it. But then before I could stop him, he went ahead and paid for it. Ugh, how frustrating! I was sitting in the church, waiting for the wedding to start, while Leon flirted with some girls. Thank God Lincoln wasn't like that jerk. Then everyone went to their seats and the wedding began. The groom walked to the altar in this luxury-fitted suit. Man, it must be so nice to be rich. But isn't that... Is that... Lincoln? My Lincoln? Our eyes met, and he looked as shocked as I did. But instead of running to me and explaining everything, he just ignored me and continued with the wedding. I had to watch them saying their vows, exchanging rings, and kissing... I thought I was going to faint any minute now. Then at the wedding reception, Leon dragged me over to Lincoln and introduced me as his girlfriend. Awkward overload. And soon, some pretty girl distracted Leon again, so he chased after her. Then Lincoln immediately pulled me over to the stairwell. Why are you here with my brother? Were you cheating on me this whole time? Seriously? What about you? I'm not the one who just got married. Let me explain. It's not what it looks like. Right at that moment, Leon appeared and asked why we were here talking. I muttered out some story about trying to find the bathroom. Then I told Leon I had a headache and asked him to take me home. This was so confusing. How could my perfect boyfriend now be married to someone else? He kept on texting me saying he wanted to meet up and talk. I guess I needed to at least hear him out. The next day, I met him at the museum, where we had our first date. So, his wife, Sandra is a daughter of an affluential businessman who owns one of the biggest corporations in town. Lincoln's family company is in big debt, so his dad forced him to marry Sandra in order to save the company. B 
Believe me when I say I don't have any feelings for Sandra. It's just business. I only love you. Please don't leave me. I promise as soon as the company is back on track, I'll file for divorce. Yeah, I know you probably think I'm crazy, but I still love him too. Besides, if the marriage is only temporary so he can save this family business, then that's understandable, right? He kissed me goodbye and left. But after that, Lincoln changed. Every time I texted and called him, he told me he was busy and would call me back. But he never did. I guess married life was preoccupying him. As if this wasn't frustrating enough, I had to put up with Leon. He kept on appearing at my place and bothering me. One time he showed up drunk, complaining about his ex-girlfriend, who'd just married someone else. Yeah, obviously it's far from worse than my current boyfriend just getting married. I tried to kick him out, but he'd already fallen asleep on my couch. The next morning I went to the kitchen to see Leon holding a picture of me and Lincoln and asking why we were on it. So I just shrugged and explained that we were a couple. Leon started laughing and calling me a fool. We argued back and forth, and in the end, I made him leave. I don't care what everyone thinks. I believe Lincoln. Then a few days later, I was walking out of college when I saw Mr. Hall waiting for me. He gave a slight sigh, then said, I will make this short. Stay away from Lincoln. He's married now. Layla, I'm fond of you, but if you try messing with Lincoln's marriage, I won't hesitate in making things complicated for you. Oh my god. I can't believe Leon snitched on me. Ugh, what a giant baby. In anger, I took out my phone and gave him a piece of my mind. Oh my god. I can't believe you told your dad about me and Lincoln. You're such a jerk. Just leave us alone and mind your own business. If you trust Lincoln, then that's on you. But he's not as innocent as he makes out. He and dad would do everything for the company. What did that mean? I hung up without letting him say another word. This jerk didn't even try to cover up his action. <laughs> I couldn't just let them do this. I needed to fight for us. So the next day, I walked straight into Mr. Hall's office, even though his secretary tried to stop me. I told him right to his face that I would never give up on Lincoln despite his threats. And you know what? Forcing your son to get married just to save the company makes you a coward. Mr. Hall burst out laughing. Well, what came next was far from funny. Turns out it was Lincoln's idea to marry Sandra. Leon was right. Both of them would do everything for the company. Another thing Leon didn't tell Mr. Hall about Lincoln and me. He saw us talking at the wedding. So we hired someone to investigate us. I was totally wrong about Leon. Right at that moment, Lincoln walked in and stopped dead on seeing me. Layla, what are you doing here? You liar. I can't believe I trusted you. Please hear me out. I took the iced coffee from Mr. Hall's desk and splashed it in Lincoln's lying face. We're done. Overcome with emotions and feeling like a massive fool, I rushed to the nearest bar to drown my sorrows. I was about to down my fourth shop when a hand stopped me. <sighs> Can Lincoln just leave me alone? But when I looked up, it was Leon. Why are you so good to me? I mean, I blamed you for telling your dad. You should hate me. Because I like you. I felt like the room was spinning upon hearing his words. Then everything slowly came to light. Leon was devastated when his girlfriend broke up with him. But then he found out she did it to be with his brother. Yes, you heard me right. His ex was none other than Sandra. At first, Mr. Hall forced Leon to marry Sandra for the sake of the company. Even though Leon was crazy about her, he didn't want to marry her under those stipulations. Lincoln overheard their conversation, so to gain his father's trust, he charmed Sandra away from Leon. Oh my god, this family was crazy. I didn't want anything to do with any of them ever again. So I just rejected Leon's feelings, ran straight out of the bar, and cut off totally with all of them. So what now? Well, I graduated last month. So after that, I decided I needed a fresh start in a shiny new city. So far, so good. I have a new job, which I adore. And it's so good knowing I'm not going to run into that jerk Lincoln or his dad. Hmm. I know what you're wondering. What about Leon? Well, one day, I was walking out of my apartment when I saw a familiar face. Yes, it was him. Turns out when Leon heard that I was moving to another city, he moved too. I thought it was sweet that he was willing to leave his family, friends, and job behind just to be with me. Maybe it's time to gradually open up to him, don't you think? Well, time will tell. Too bad my story has to end here. <laughs> Being the awesome class president that I am means that it's my job to show this new transfer student, Willow, what's what around here. 
So obviously this is the canteen. Heads up, don't eat the stew. Yuck. If you have any trouble finding something, just ask me. Well, I haven't seen you since middle school. What's up? Um, just still the same. Um, okay. Oh, you must be confused, but actually I already know Willow. You see, we went to the same middle school together, but to be honest, we never really talked to each other back then. She seems to still be as quiet as always. Oh, and by the way, I'm Natalie, but you can call me Nat. The next few days, I saw Willow always sitting in a corner of the classroom and doodling. She looked kind of lonely, so being a nice person, I decided to sit and talk to her. Hey, Willow. Nice shirt. She just gave me this weak smile, then continued doodling. Ugh, talk about awkward. The best thing I could do was just to stupidly smile back, then swiftly left. I didn't really bother with Willow after that. I mean, I said hi if we passed in the hallway or something, but that was it. But it turns out Willow's introverted tendencies hadn't gone unnoticed by other students. As when we were on our school expedition to the woods, I overheard them talking about her. Do you all think that Willow seems a bit weird? Yeah, you're totally right. One time I asked to borrow her eraser, and she just gave it to me without saying anything. She didn't even look me in the eye, just kept on drawing. It was so strange. Huh? Are they seriously gossiping about a new kid? Yeah, so she might not be too sociable, but people should just learn how to respect someone's personal differences, right? Hey, Willow is new here. I don't think it's very nice of you to gossip like this. Also, she's my friend from middle school, so please stop this. But just wondering, has she always been like this? Um, yeah, I guess. Actually, I was quite surprised to see her in our class. In middle school, her grades weren't that good, so it's kind of odd that she's in the top set with us. I could see the whole group was looking at me with surprised eyes. But hey, that was a few years ago. Now, so maybe she's changed. I quickly corrected myself. Then, a few days later, I was standing by my locker when suddenly my best friend Layla appeared and gripped my shoulders. Oh my god, have you heard the news? Everybody is saying Willow only got into top set because her parents made a huge donation to the school. Can you believe that? What? Who's spreading this absurd rumor? I don't know, but someone's saying that she wasn't that smart in middle school. Oh. My. God. Was the rumor culprit me? It was me! I did it! At the expedition! Oh no, I, I didn't mean to! Oh, how could I let this happen? Then when I entered class, I noticed a sobbing willow being comforted by some other students. I felt horrible, so I also went over to her and tried to cheer her up. Don't worry about it, willow. Everyone knows this rumor is a lie. Why would anyone do such a thing? I mean, I just transferred here. Who would hate me so much to say something so mean? Oh, man. I sure felt guilty. Oh, could things get any worse? Um, yeah, turns out they can. As after class, Miss Holmes suddenly asked me and Willow to stay behind. Oh, no. Did she know I was the one who started the Willow rumor? I sat there, sweating like a turkey at Thanksgiving, waiting for Miss Holmes to bust me. But then to my surprise, she said, Nat, please, can you help me get to the bottom of this horrible rumor? Phew, what a relief. But at the same time, I was freaking out. How was I supposed to catch the person responsible when I was the one who started the rumor? Albeit accidentally. Ugh, oh, what a dilemma. Wait a minute. I think I have an idea. What about I blame it on a troublemaker? It's not like they would care anyway. Whilst I'm a straight-A student, and getting into trouble for this could affect my chances to get into a prestigious college and ruin my life. Right at that moment, this guy called Bob shoved past us, then leaned against the wall and scrolled through his phone. Bingo. Gotcha. I put one hand against the wall and gave him a suspicious look. Hey, Bob. How you doing? Um, fine. So... About this Willow rumor? Who did you hear it from? Bob just shrugged and continued staring at his phone. Or did you do it? Maybe you were bored. So you spread the rumor to tease the new girl. Am I right? Or what? Only by then Bob looked at me. What? Are you crazy? I don't know this Willow girl. Besides, I was off all last week sick. Now leave me alone. Oh man, this was a massive fail. Now what should I do? I needed a minute to think. Okay, don't panic, Nat. You're smart, so you'll think of something. That's when I turned and caught a glimpse of Willow's sad face. Don't worry. I will find out who did it. I comforted her. But inside, I was screaming. 
I hated lying to her, but this was an accident. I never meant to spread that rumor. At that moment, Layla appeared and said she wanted to help. Great. Like this quest wasn't complicated enough. Ugh. Layla told us that she heard the rumor from this nerd, Ben. So we all tracked him down and asked him. But he heard it from some other dude, and it went on and on until a girl said that she heard it from Ashley. That's when I remembered that Ashley was on the talking group in the expedition. Oh, no. I had to stop this encounter between us. So when they spotted Ashley, I started making weird noises and made out I had a stomachache. They were still going to her, so I had to scream loudly like I was in labor. In the medical room, I continued screaming as if I was in a lot of pain. The nurses diagnosed that it might be appendix pain, so I immediately needed to be transferred to the hospital. I instantly stopped screaming as soon as I heard that and said, it's just that time of the month. Phew, that was close. But at least I've successfully stopped them from investigating Ashley. Well, I spoke too soon, because right that second, Ashley walked into the medical room, but thank God she didn't mention me. Instead, she said Carl told her about it. Phew. To my luck, Carl was absent today, so the manhunt had to end here. It would unfortunately continue tomorrow, though. As we warily walked out of school, I glanced over at Willow and saw that she looked really down. Ugh, that made me feel so bad. So to make it up for her, I asked her if she wanted to grab a sandwich. My treat, of course. And she said yes. Mmm, that sandwich was so good. And Willow seemed to enjoy hers, too. It was great to see her happier, so I decided to extend our trip by going to the mall. Willow kept on glancing at this dress, but it was out of her price range, so being the awesome friend that I am, I bought it for her as a gift. Well, that's the least I can do after everything I'd done to her, right? But then I noticed something weird. When I was standing at the counter to pay for it, I turned around and saw her smirking. Then when she saw me looking at her, she immediately smiled and thanked me for the dress. Huh, so strange. The next day, the rumor scavenger hunt continued. Ugh. We cornered Carl and questioned him, but he couldn't remember where he heard it from. Layla asked him to think carefully, and he just shrugged and said he had no idea. Layla got suspicious, so she immediately reported him to the principal's office. I didn't even have a chance to stop her. The next thing I knew, we were being called out over the loudspeaker and summoned to go to the principal's office. Then Carl confessed that yesterday he got an anonymous message via Facebook saying that they were willing to pay him if he agreed not to tell the name of the person who told him the rumor. He showed us his phone, but all the messages and the user account didn't exist anymore. That's right. I was the anonymous user who contacted Carl yesterday. Thank God I deleted the messages and the account on time. But things weren't that simple. The principal decided to suspend Carl for withholding information. Finally! My plan worked! But why wasn't I feeling happy about it? On the contrary, I felt... Bad. Really, really bad. Blaming someone for my mistake wasn't right. I couldn't do that to Carl. So I stood up and blurted out, It was me all along. I started the rumor, but it was an accident. Well, and that's it. Cue a two-week suspension. Now Willow is refusing to hear my apology and everyone else thinks I'm some villain. Only Layla has stuck by my side and remained adamant there was more to the story. Then, a few days later, when I was trying to curb my boredom with potato chips and a Love is Blind marathon, Layla came by and told me the shocking news. There may be a chance that I wasn't the person who spread the rumor about Willow. The thing is, Layla continued asking around school and ended up with a girl named Rosa, who had a reputation for gossiping. Rosa told Layla that she was in the bathroom when suddenly a girl in the cabin next to her started telling her about the rumor. Rosa found it odd, so she bent down to see who it was, but the only thing she could see was a pair of pink Nike Air Force One. Then Layla asked me, You know who always wears those, right? I nodded. But objectively, there could be other girls who own the same shoes, correct? Fortunately, Rosa also noticed an important detail that will help us close the case. The right shoe has a tear mark. I checked our suspect's shoes, and they match. <gasps> so we finally knew who really did it. We just needed a plan to trap them. The next day, we called Willow to meet us at a cafe and told her that we found the real culprit. But when Willow arrived, she immediately got mad and yelled at me. Stop blaming it on somebody else. Maybe the person heard you when you were speaking about me during the expedition trip. As soon as Willow said that, Layla and I immediately looked at each other and grinned. What's so funny? I never told you that I spread the rumor at the expedition. I didn't even tell the principal. I only confessed that I was the one who said it. That's all. 
Willow looked shocked. Then we told her about Rosa and how she saw Willow's shoes, so Willow couldn't deny it anymore. Okay, it was me. I've never liked you, and you think you're so perfect. So at the expedition, when I overheard you talking about me like that, it made me so mad that I came up with the idea to spread the rumor about myself and then blame it on you. So you'd look like a horrible person and I'd get people's sympathy. A genius plan, right? Oh my, oh my. Who would have thought that the victim herself was actually the one who did the crime? Layla got so mad that she immediately wanted to report Willow to the principal, but I stopped her. I realized that it was partly my fault too. If I hadn't told people anything about Willow, then this never would have happened. So, well, after that, Willow and I stopped talking to each other. Actually, if I see her in the hallway, I'll purposefully walk the other way. But anyway, thanks to this incident, I learned some valuable lessons. Never, ever gossip, as it's just not worth it. And also, choose your friends wisely. Hey, Diana here. Last time you saw me, I had just received some life-changing news. I'd lived in a beautiful castle my entire life, but only as a servant to my best friend, Princess Anne. Until I was revealed a huge secret. I was actually the daughter of the late Queen Mary. Only she wasn't dead. She was being held prisoner by her sister, the current Queen Miranda. Also, that made me a real princess. I was still skeptical about it, so I went on a mission to find answers and free Mary. I found a friend in Harry, a delivery driver for the castle who showed me the poor conditions most people in the kingdom were living in. But the thing is, I didn't spill a word to anyone about my identity until I received my DNA results, confirming a connection with Queen Mary. Why? All this time, you've been keeping it from us? You're citizens? I... uh... I had my reason, okay? And I only found out about this not long ago. But yes, Queen Mary is indeed still alive. Then I began to tell Harry and his father the whole story. I know it sounds crazy, but... I believe you. DNA doesn't lie. I'm sorry for doubting you. But the important thing is, you're the true heir to the throne. You're going to be the key to Anne Miranda's tyranny. Slow down, son. We'll need a perfect plan, or else it would cost us our lives. And we can't do it without you, Diana. I couldn't help but feel overwhelmed. The fate of the whole country was now resting on my shoulders, and I wasn't sure I was ready. I needed a little time to clear my head, so I took a walk through the town street, only to see this heartbreaking scene. Please, Diana, help us. Our supply is running out, and we'll soon owe grand tributes to the palace. Next month is Princess Anne's coronation. I didn't know what to say to them. I couldn't promise I would succeed. Gosh, I just needed one moment away from all this. I snuck away to a hill, and shortly after, Harry found me. You're okay? I'm sorry if I put a lot of pressure on you. Just know that you don't owe us anything, and it's up to you whether you want to do this or not. I really appreciate that. But yeah, I knew I had to do this, just not sure how. Don't worry, okay? We'll figure this out together. For a minute there, I lost track of everything as I gazed into his sparkling eyes. But this is not the time, Diana. I shook my head, and when I opened my eyes again... The lights from the aristocratic area lit up. That's when it hit me. Hey, let's ask the Noble District for help. They have more resources than they could ever need. We've tried that, but every single time they'd send hunting dogs to chase us away. So they're just as corrupted as Miranda. Then we'll have to take it from them instead. Let's assemble the people. The next morning, everyone gathered at the square. I had rehearsed my speech all night, and I was ready. Citizens of our kingdom, listen to me carefully. Rise up and reclaim what belongs to you from the nobles in the dictator Miranda. We can't keep our heads down and put up with this anymore. We need to unite and fight them for our resources. But we're not fighters. They take us down immediately. That won't happen. We outnumbered them by a wide gap. We can beat them if we're willing to. So, what do you say? No one replied. They all looked concerned and doubted my words. Right then, some nobles walking their ferocious hunting dogs passed by. Hey, what the heck do you think you're up to? Dissolve. Immediately. Then they released their barking dogs on the crowd. People started screaming in fear. I tried my best to calm them and bring the truth to light. Can't you see? These people and the queen live in luxury because they robbed us of our food, our wealth, our dignity. Do you know what the beef and pork you worked so hard to raise are used for? To feed these dogs. Meanwhile, all you have to get by on is dry, moldy bread. And you just can accept that? Do you want to spend your whole life bowing down to these cold-blooded people? I held my breath as they murmured to each other. 
Then they stood up taller, stronger, together. Get out of our town. You have no power over us anymore. They shouted at the nobles, forced them and their dogs to retreat. The people cheered as they left the city square. Harry and I looked at each other, knowing we needed to act now. So we led the people to the nobles' food storage to reclaim everything that rightfully belonged to them. The news of our coup quickly reached Queen Miranda, who issued a nationwide warrant for my arrest. I had to watch my back everywhere I went, but luckily, the citizens were looking out for me too. Like when the soldiers were on to me, Aaron, the flower shop owner, told me to hide in his flower cart. When they approached, he replied, No one is here except me, you fools. Get out of my way. Then continued to push his cart away, leaving the soldiers dumbfounded. Another time, I was on the run again from the nobles when the trolley came near. The driver told me to hop on, then handed me a uniform and a fake mustache. And voila! We confused the heck out of those nobles. <laughs> But there were many more encounters like that with Miranda's minion. It'd be a matter of time before they caught me, so we had to overthrow Miranda before that happened. At the same time, we also needed to get a stable food resource for the people. I knew the castle's layout like the back of my hand, so we hatched a plan to sneak in. And we had to take action before the coronation ceremony, when Anne is supposed to ascend the throne. If not, Anne would just become Miranda's puppet, and the country would endure her tyranny for many more decades. This was our only chance, because the palace's security would be at its most vulnerable since everyone would be gathered at the chapel preparing for the coronation. It is time to end this, once and for all. The night before the coronation, we snuck into the castle as planned. I led a group of people disguised as servants down to the dungeon to rescue Queen Mary. Meanwhile, Harry led the rest of the storage warehouse to seize the largest food storage in the palace to make the enemy surrender entirely. But when we arrived at the dungeon, Miranda was already there. Diana, what are you doing here? Run, now! Shut up, sister. I was waiting for my niece. How did you know I'm here? Huh, do you genuinely believe you could pull off this foolish treason plan without my notice? Guess you really are nothing more than a dumb maid. Guards, bring them out. I turned around and saw the guards dragging Harry and his team to the cellar. My guards have already captured your other crew in the warehouse. It's time to end your ridiculous rebellion. You... Unless you'd like them to be banished from the kingdom instead. Do whatever you want with me, but leave these people. Miranda smirked hearing my words and ordered the guards to throw me along with the others in the cell. Please, Miranda, she doesn't deserve to rot in here. You still can't shake off that rambling habit after all these years, sister. You'll never get away with this. You've oppressed your own people to their limits. Someday soon, they're going to rise up and overthrow you. Big words for such a little brat. Let me guess, even you couldn't tell that your own partner is my right-hand man, aren't you? What? Harold? The Count? You're lying. It can't be. Harry, why are you standing there? Say something. But he only turned away. In shame. So, this is real? Had he been pretending to be on the people's side all along? What about his family? I asked him to turn you over for my guarantee of his family's safety and a lifetime supply of food. And he agreed. He had no obligation to you now. He's already betrothed to Princess Anne. Betrothed? <laughs> You'll have the rest of your life in the dungeon to think it over, brat. Harold, let's go. I was dumbfounded when I suddenly heard a familiar voice echoing through the dungeon. Diana, where are you? Anne, is that you? I'm straight ahead. There you are. I was so worried when you suddenly disappeared. I'm sorry I couldn't tell you everything. It's okay. I just heard the whole thing since I followed the guards who dragged Harold down here. But don't you worry. I can plead to my mother to release you under the condition that you and your mom leave the country and never return. Why? You don't really think you can stand against my mom, do you? There's no end to this, Diana. I know, but with your help, we might be able to turn things around. We have to fight for what we believe in, Anne. You still want a simple life and open a bakery, right? This is your chance. But, but she's my mother. How can I turn against her? Please, Diana, just listen to me. No, Anne. I can't do that to all the people who are suffering out there. We'd rather stay in here forever than be free and act like Miranda didn't commit all her crimes. I guess, from now on, we go our separate ways. Goodbye, Anne. Anne burst out crying and left. I slumped at the corner of the dead silent cell. What was I thinking? That I could make a change? And now I had failed everyone. Queen Mary, Stella, Harold, Anne, and everyone else. Uh, I don't think I could do this anymore. <laughs> don't cry now, dear. 
This isn't the end. I, I don't even know anymore. There's no way out. Harry must have known I could never succeed. So he switched sides, right? So did Anne. No, they might have had their reasons, but they did what they did. And it's not your fault. I know it's hard, but you need to get it together. This is not the time to show weakness. As much as I didn't think I could, I was determined to try. Early the next morning, another group, led by Harold's father, unexpectedly showed up for mine and Queen Mary's rescue. How did you know we were here? Harry contacted me last night and asked for help. So, here we are. You see, not only me, but the people also believe in you. I suddenly understood why Harold had to pretend to be on Queen Miranda's side yesterday. He had a backup plan all along. Now we needed to go stop the coronation ceremony ASAP, before it was too late. When we arrived, Anne was already walking up to receive the crown. I dashed through the spectators to get to the front of the crowd. Stop! I object to Princess Anne's coronation, because I, Diana, daughter of Queen Mary, am the legitimate heir to the throne, and I have the DNA test as proof. The crowd grew loud as they reacted to this news. Even the soldiers stopped in their tracks. Guards! Seize her! Before they could reach me, Harold and a group of civilians created a human shield around me, ready to protest. Order! Order! That evidence is fabricated and there's no proof of its validity. Don't be fooled by her! At that moment, Queen Mary finally made her entrance, and the crowd went dead silent. Citizens of our kingdom, I'm your Queen Mary, and I'm very much alive. But I've been held captive for so many years by none other than my sister, Miranda. It was she who took advantage of my weakness after Diana was born to seize control of the kingdom. Now, she and all of you know the truth, and you know that Miranda is not your- Stop all this ridiculousness! I am still the queen of this kingdom, regardless of how. This is treason. Seize them all, now! But no one did as she said. The soldiers, officials, and the entire crowd turned to face Queen Mary and bowed before their true queen for the first time in 18 years. Miranda angrily charged towards us, but she took a surprise detour to prison where she'll await trial. Then an official returned the crown to Queen Mary, but she didn't put it on. Instead, the ceremony was started again, and I was crowned as the new queen of the kingdom. Are you sure? I still have so much to learn. Why don't you see it for yourself? All hail Queen Diana! Thanks to you, we are saved from the famine and the dictator. You gave us a better life. You are the queen we've been praying for. I could burst out crying hearing their chanting. You see, being a queen is not about immense wealth or influence. It is truly about what you have to offer to the world and who you are inside. And you, my dear, are ready for this. Thank you. I'll try my best to live up to your legacy, Mom. I gave her the biggest hug as the crowd cheered on. And so, I officially became the queen. My first order of duty was to return what rightfully belonged to the people. I promised myself that from now on, no one will suffer under my rule. As the people gathered their things, Harold came wanting to talk, and we left for somewhere private. Diana, I want to be honest with you. I originally became a royal official because I wanted to change Miranda's mind and help the people. But no one took me seriously. They said I should know my place and be grateful that a commoner like me landed a place among the nobility. They even forced me to be the one who delivered the tributes from the people to the castle. It made me sick. But the moment I met you, I felt joy and happiness, the kind that I hadn't felt for a while now. I didn't want to accept the truth that I was betrothed to Anne. I just wanted to be with you. Uh, I didn't know you feel that way. Mom told me you like me and want to be with me, and she'll let us be after I was sent the throne. Anne! I'm sorry to say this, Princess Anne, but your mother has been deceiving you. I was only engaged to you by her force, not my own will. I deeply regret disappointing your feelings. I'd never expected my first love would end like this, but I'm glad for you, Diana. You two have my blessing. Oh, Anne, I never meant to hurt you. No, this will be good for me. I can finally leave the castle and have a normal life. Become a baker, like I always wanted. Thanks to you, Queen Diana. As sad as it made me to lose her, we'd grown up together after all. I knew it was best to respect her decision and let her go. It was what we both needed. Now that everything else is sorted out, I can breathe a sigh of relief. Oh, wait. Not yet. Harry or Harold? Which one is it? Whichever one you like. Let me make this clear. I'm still mad at you for lying. So you'll face punishments, mister. Well, well, look who's flexing their power on day one of the reign. What? You dare challenge the queen? No, 
This humble servant of yours is ready to obey the Almighty Queen's orders for the rest of my life. Then I order you to kiss me now. At your service, Your Majesty. Then he pulled me closer and swept me off my feet with the most passionate kiss ever. Guess my story does end like a fairy tale after all, huh? Wow! This place was like a life-size dollhouse. It was huge and whoa! Was that a whirlpool bath? I was in heaven. <laughs> Slow down, dear. OMG, you even have an indoor badminton court? I love badminton. This was the most amazing house ever. Hey, I'm Helen, and I grew up in a normal house with a normal family. I love my parents and life was great and all, but the one downside was the long journey to my new high school. My mom, Grace, said she had the answer to this and suggested I go and stay with my Aunt Lucy as she lived closer to the school. Okay, so I never met Lucy before. Actually, until Mom mentioned her, I didn't even know I had an aunt. Mom explained that Aunt Lucy moved to Canada for business and had only returned to the U.S. recently. This was the first time I had to live so far away from my parents, so I was kind of worried I'd get homesick. But one advantage was my bestie, Madeline, lived right nearby. Awesome, right? Besides, this place was dope. I couldn't stop gawking at that badminton court. Seriously, it was bigger than my house. Aunt Lucy, I guess you must really like badminton. Yes, many people think it's just a backyard game, but it's a true sport to me. Wow, it was a rarity to meet someone with the same taste as me. We chatted for ages about our interests. Lucy was so easy to talk to, and I honestly felt like I'd known her for years. I would love to become a pro badminton player, but mom thinks I should keep it as a hobby and find a more stable career. I see, but don't let others discourage you. The true passion is worth pursuing. Let me arrange a training schedule for you. Now, try this. Oh, how do you know I like lobster linguine? At first, living with Lucy was like being in a dream world. She pampered me, bought me clothes I wanted, and cooked the most delicious dishes. But beneath the shine, there was also a darker side. Lucy was super strict. I mean, major general level strict. I had to wake up at 5 a.m. each morning for training, run laps of it for an hour, and hit 50 shuttlecocks over the net in a row. If I missed one, I had to start over again. Meanwhile, I still had to keep up with my homework, and I couldn't go and meet my friends on the weekend or do anything without asking Lucy for permission first. Ugh. At least at school, I could vent to Maddie about it. I expected her to agree with me, but she shrugged and said, I guess your aunt just wants the best for you. Besides, your badminton skills have improved loads. If I could live in a luxurious house, eat delicious food with such a caring aunt, I'd so put up with a grueling training schedule. Yeah, I guess she's right. Maybe I should be more grateful. Of course, on finding out about the school badminton club, I immediately signed up for it. I was walking over to the court, swinging my racket about and ready to show off my skills when these two guys approached me. Go back to the cheerleading team where you belong, sweetie. Leave the court for the real pros. How dare these idiots judge me like this? They hadn't even seen me play. Oh yeah? I challenge you to a game. Then we'll see who's serious. We're the best players in the school, just so you know. Pick one. Suddenly, another guy appeared next to me and said, Then let's play doubles. Oh my god, he's Tyler, the best badminton player in the whole school. I've heard all about his reputation and seen photos of him with a trophy in the school newsletter, but I've never met him before. Surprisingly, he's even cuter in person. Pfft, you can defeat us in singles, but can you cover that useless girl in a duo match? That's it. Scoot over. Let me show you what this useless girl can do. The game started and instantly... Tyler and I vibed on the court and were hitting the shuttlecocks at lightning speed. We won in straight sets, and those losers looked so bummed out. <laughs> Tyler seemed super impressed. And then, good game, Helen. Do you want to hang out again? How about tomorrow? We could go get some food. Mamma mia! How can I say no to that? But when I told Aunt Lucy, she didn't take it so well. Love may seem appealing, but it's a waste of time and energy that will lead to a decline in your badminton abilities. Your grades, your mood, everything. You're too immature to deal with those type of emotions right now. This was ridiculous. I wasn't a little kid. I was perfectly capable of making my own decisions and following my own feelings. 
He's a sweet guy who helped me out. Of course he did. All guys appear nice at first. Maybe if you just gave him a chance. Wake up, Helen, and stop yourself from throwing away your dreams for some boy. Ugh, it was no use. My aunt was too stubborn to listen. I stormed up to my room, feeling frustrated. No way was I letting my aunt's strictness ruin things with my dream guy. So I decided to sneak out to meet Tyler. But how? Ah, I know exactly the person who can help. Matt's red code. Aunt Lucy won't let me see Tyler. Please help me distract her. Okay, but only if you get me a signed copy of the Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. Easy peasy. After that day, I was able to go on multiple dates with Tyler, all thanks to Maddie's help. She always came up with the most convincing excuses, like I was going to her house for group study or we were going to a super important event. Then one time when I was supposed to study at home, it was actually Maddie pretending to be me. Later, I sneak back into my room, all giddy. You wouldn't believe how great our date was today. But Maddie just gave this awkward look. What's up? Did my aunt suspect something? N no, everything's fine. Then she immediately climbed out of the window. Hmm, strange. But the next day she acted like nothing had happened. So I let it slide. She must have just felt unwell or something. Meanwhile, things with Tyler were getting better and better. After a romantic date, we walked home, and suddenly Tyler stopped me, looking all shy and nervous. Helen, I, I really like you, and I like spending time with you. Be my girlfriend, will you? OMG, this was the best thing that had ever happened to me. I flung my arms around him and yelled out of my lungs, yes! When I finally let go of him, out of nowhere, a kid on roller skates bumped into me and sent me tumbling into the road. A car zoomed toward me, and before I could process anything, Tyler sprinted forward and pushed me away. When I opened my eyes, he was lying there unconscious. I panically called an ambulance and went with him to the hospital. As I sat in the waiting room with floods of tears, I was so scared and didn't know what to do that I ended up calling Aunt Lucy. Only a few minutes later, I saw her hurrying toward me, looking dead serious. Helen, what have I told you? You lied to me to hang out with a boy? I had no heart to argue about that and immediately burst into a fresh bout of tears. It's my fault. Tyler risked his life to save me and now he's hurt. Aunt Lucy's demeanor softened and she pulled me in closer. After a while of consoling me, she finally opened up and shared a story I didn't expect. Actually, I fell in love when I was around your age, but he betrayed me. I just don't want you to be hurt like that. Oh, that's terrible. But Tyler is a good guy. I just know he is. He saved me. And for that, I'm truly grateful. Okay, I'll trust your judgment and give you my blessing to get to know him further. Thank you. Right then, the doctor appeared and told us that Tyler was all right and he would make a full recovery in a few days. Thank goodness. When Tyler was back, Aunt Lucy stuck to her word and gave me and him a chance together. She even offered to give both of us a badminton lesson. Brace yourself for the craziest training routine ever. But practicing with Tyler made it actually bearable and a lot more fun. I had a big competition coming up, which could get me the professional player title and a chance to join the national team if I won. So I needed all the training I could get. Just one more step away from my greatest dream. Also, I couldn't contain my smile when seeing Lucy gradually warmed up to Tyler. My big day finally came. Mom and Dad were here to support me as well. I excitedly got ready, but when I opened the kit bag... What happened? Oh no! Who's destroyed our babies? I... I think Lucy might have done it. Why on earth would she do that? I overheard her saying that she was only pretending to like Tyler so she could keep an eye on you both. What? I honestly believed that Aunt Lucy was actually giving Tyler a chance. But it still didn't make any sense. Even if Lucy hated Tyler, why would she try to ruin this competition? She knew how much it meant to me. There's one more thing, but I don't think you're ready to hear it. Gosh, just spill the beans, Maddie. Actually, the day I disguised as you, I found something out. Lucy's not your aunt. She's your mom. She wants to take you back to Canada with her, and she knows if you won this contest, then you'd never want to leave. I stood there in complete shock. So, my beloved family I'd known all these years wasn't actually mine? And Lucy, how come she had the brazenness to show up now as my real mother and wanted to take me back? I felt like my whole life had been one big lie and immediately rushed to find Lucy. Is it true? You're my real mom? How did you know? I can't believe you did that to me. You're selfish, terrible, and ruined everything. Go away. I don't want to see you anymore. 
I don't have a mom like you. Grace is my one and only mother. Lucy looked completely broken, then quietly left. I was shaking in anger and pain when a gentle hand laid on my shoulder. Helen, sweetie, I know it's hard to take it in. Trust me, this was difficult for us all. You all lied to me. How could you just agree to send me off to her? You never consider me as your real daughter, do you? Don't think silly, honey. We love you so much and never want to let you go. Unless it's better for you. Then mom told me how Lucy came and persuaded her. Turned out, Lucy had a very tragic past. Since childhood, she'd always been the black sheep in her family. They treated her poorly and despised her badminton passion. Then when she told them she was pregnant, they threw her out. And her boyfriend also ditched her right after that. So she had no choice but to leave me at the orphanage and begin a new life in Canada. After countless hardships, she finally became successful. And all she desired was to reconnect with me. I believe everyone deserves a second chance. That's why I let you two live together for a while. Only if you're happy, I would tell you the truth, so you wouldn't be too shocked. Besides, she can help you more than me now. Hey, you even inherited her badminton spirit. I was stunned for a while. It's true that Lucy left me, but that's because she didn't want me to suffer with her. And I indeed had a happy life. I shouldn't be so rude to her. But it was still a lot to digest, so I went home with mom. I shut myself away until the next day. Tyler came and tried to convince my gloomy self to go for a walk. I know that's a lot, but I think you should make up with Lucy. Why are you still on her side? She only pretended to be nice to you, and she ruined the contest just to take me away from this perfect life. We can find our chance in plenty of other competitions. But there's only one Lucy. She's your biological mother, and it's fine to be mad with her. But you should never reject her. My mind wandered back to all the happy moments I'd had with Lucy. Our interesting chat, the delicious meals she cooked, and the times we played badminton together. She even had a special room to store badminton equipment, especially the rackets. Wait, Lucy treasured badminton rackets. If she simply wanted to stop us from competing in the contest, then she could have just hidden our rackets or pretended that the car broke down. But she would never destroy the rackets like that. Ty, do you remember who else handled our rackets that day? I'm not sure. I, um, oh, I think Madeline had them at some point. So, could it be Maddie? But why? She had no reason to do that. She was my best friend and always supported me to play badminton. I stormed over to Maddie's house, but she's arguing with her dad on the doorstep. You useless, pathetic rascal. Go then. I don't care. Maddie ran off in tears, and I followed her to an alley. Seeing her like that made some of my anger toward her fade. Hey, what's going on? Maddie seemed surprised to see me. She tried to dodge some of my questions at first, but seeing nowhere to hide, she finally confessed. My mom left me to that alcoholic dad who does nothing but shout at me all day. You have two moms who love you, and I I don't even have one. I was angry at Lucy because, to me, all of the moms who gave up their child are heartless and deserve no forgiveness. She even wanted to take you to Canada. I couldn't lose you, too. The fear and jealousy got the better of me, so I broke your rackets, then blamed Lucy. I'm so sorry. This sounds tough, but you still shouldn't have done it. I'm always here to listen to you, and I'm not moving anywhere. You're stuck with me. When Maddie felt better, I took her to my home and intended to find Lucy to apologize for everything. But Mom said Lucy had decided to go back to Canada and was on her way to the airport. I immediately hailed a cab to the airport, then ran through departures, desperately trying to find Lucy. I was starting to think I was too late, when suddenly, I spotted her about to walk through towards security. Lucy! Mom, please don't go! I, I thought you don't want me. No, I was just confused and angry and I'm sorry that I hurt you. We finally sorted things out and agreed to give each other a chance to start over. So, what happened next? Well, Lucy decided to expand her business to the U.S. so she could stay here with me. My wonderful adoptive parents took Maddie in after helping her get away from her toxic father. So now I have two amazing moms, an awesome sister, and... Yes, you know it! A super cute, thoughtful boyfriend. Hi, 
I'm Miley Cyrus. You've probably heard some of my songs like Wrecking Ball, The Climb, and Flowers from my latest chart-topping album, Endless Summer Vacation, although my most loyal fans have known me since my Disney Channel days. This story isn't about me, though. Today I'm narrating the life of a young star from the South, just like me. I'll tell you why later. For now, please like and subscribe. I know all about being famous at a young age. And trust me, no glory comes without blood, sweat, and tears. And Scarlett Spencer was no exception. Her journey to stardom began in a small town in Texas. Her mother passed away long ago. Still, she grew up happily with her dad who owned a little diner and her baby sister, Naomi. These two were polar opposites. The quiet, introverted Scarlett helped out at the diner, while Naomi, who was in high school, lived and breathed social media. Give me a phone, mine's out of juice. Man, this brick's been only to call and text for years. It should have something new. In case you still haven't figured it out, well, Naomi's creating an Instagram account under her sister's name to post pics. Give it back. I need it now. Naomi, I already said I don't like social media. What's with this photo and the Ritz-Carlton and ridiculous caption? We were just there for dad's delivery. Relax. Everybody has a social media presence these days. That photo will get you tons of hearts and followers. Honestly, if my sister ever did that to me, she would have been six feet under by now. But Scarlett let Naomi off the hook, because to her, Naomi was her bestest friend, who she could tell everything to. While Scarlett was the best sister she could ask for, Naomi knew she'd never find anyone else who'd satisfy her every whim like that. They frequented this spot by the lake for a stroll, a jog, or simply pouring their hearts out. I wanna go where culture is, like New York or LA. The only thing exciting in this town is probably a party bus that comes by every millennium. <sighs> You're a big dreamer, and that's good, but isn't a peaceful and quiet life nice too? <laughs> Bless their hearts. They have no idea what's in store for them, but it's really hard to imagine that their uneventful lives could change. All of a sudden, when their dad got in an accident and lost his job. With no relatives, the family was dealt the worst hand. Scarlett alone couldn't manage the diner, dad's medical bill, as well as Naomi. Then one day, their dad set them down, looking seriously insistent. I know that this is a lot to take in, but your mother, she's still alive. This is her. What? We got divorced and cut all ties long ago. I never spoke of it because it's too complicated. Now that your old man is in this situation, you should go to your mother and shouldn't have to suffer because of me. Both of them were too shocked to speak. Scarlett went to her room, the photo squeezed tightly in her hand. Is this really my mother? When are we leaving? What are you excited about? All we have is this address and her photo. What if she won't accept us as her daughters? She abandoned us all those years, remember? It's still worth a try. Do you know I've lost count how many times I've wished for a mother? And then this happened like a miracle. Scarlet tossed and turned all night because of what her father revealed just now, while Naomi thought long and hard about what she would wear. The next morning, the sisters got up early and went to the address on the note, which led them to a magnificent building, Elite Talent Management. They stepped inside with bewilderment written all over their faces. Excuse me, we're looking for Mrs. Athena Kinsley? Perfect timing. Miss Kinsley's here this week for our statewide audition. In fact, she's right behind you. They were both in awe to see a woman who exudes sophistication and confidence. Naomi rushed to her. Excuse me, ma'am, are you Athena Kinsley? The woman gracefully turned around, lowered her shades, and scanned them both from head to toe. Hello, I'm Naomi Spencer, and this is my sister Scarlett. We, uh, believe you're our mother. Uh, um, does the name Joseph Spencer ring any bell to you? He's our dad. He told us to come find mom. I mean, you. That was awkward, but they got a reaction out of the Ice Queen. She was shooketh, but quickly regained composure. You two, come with me. Clear my schedule. The girls followed her with uncertainty. When they reached the elevator, everyone inside immediately got out. Some of them even bowed to her. During the elevator ride, Scarlett and Naomi looked at each other in confusion about this lady who's supposedly their mother. Athena got down to business as soon as the door closed. I thought your father wanted you to forget that I existed. But here you are. Start talking. While Scarlett talked, Naomi looked around Athena's office with great excitement. Her eyes lit up when she saw a photo of Athena with Beyonce. Dad needs... Did you work with Beyonce? <clears throat> yes, she's still one of my clients. Miley Cyrus, Jennifer Lawrence, Britney Spears. I've worked with all of them. Surprise! The truth's finally out. I actually agreed to tell this story to return a favor Athena did for me when I parted ways with Disney. Rough times, but totally worth it. Okay, continue. As I was saying, Dad needs physical therapy and a private nurse, but we can afford neither. He needs your help. Mm -mm, Mom? This is the first time we've spoken in so long, and you're just asking for money? I'm afraid it can't be that easy. 
Really? This is our father, your ex-husband. Jeez, why did I even bother coming here asking the person who abandoned us for help? Naomi, we're leaving. Sit down. I didn't say no, but I won't hand you a huge bag of cash for nothing. Instead, you can work for it. You do have a pretty face and quite a feisty character, and I have everything you'd need to get far in this business. How does that sound? That took a turn, but Naomi was even more surprised than I am. Why isn't mom asking her, but only her sister? Her introverted anti-social media sister? No thanks. I want a nice breezy laugh and zero limelight. We'll figure something out. Without you! On their way home, Naomi kept nagging Scarlet for refusing a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. She left us! That was the first time we met after so long, yet she didn't fake a smile and even try to exploit us. Can't you see that? No! You assume she abandoned us. Dad kept her a secret all these years, so we must have lied about that too. Mom's offer is a win-win deal. Don't you see how respected she is? Despite seeing Naomi's point, Scarlet was still stubborn. The way I see it, they don't have much time to argue, because right at that moment, their dad was having a heart attack. Luckily, the girls arrived home right on time and brought him to the ER. After hours in the ICU, his condition became stable, but needed further observation. Scarlet's face got paler with every word the doctor said about her father's treatment. I'm no accountant, but this bunch of hospital bills surely sounds bad. Sis, mom's office still stands. Do something before it's too late! Scarlet reluctantly came to see Athena again. Before signing, Scarlet had a few demands. She'd receive a fair cut of the profit and will not owe Athena anything once the contract is no longer in effect, as well as a signing advance. Also, per contract, Athena would be Scarlet's manager. Hmm, this is actually very common. My mom Tish has been my manager to this day, but that's me. I can't talk about her case. Scarlet immediately transferred her dad to the best hospital in Texas. Looking at his unconscious state, she got all the motivation she needed before leaving for the city, thoughts about her future swirling in her mind. From the start, Scarlett said she didn't want anyone to know they're related. Athena, being the professional she was, agreed. Then, Operation Ultimate Fashionista commenced. First off, an extensive daily workout for three hours with a personal trainer. Scarlett was used to physical labor, so she didn't break a sweat. But when she found out about the strict diet she had to follow, Scarlett realized she's in hell. What's wrong with you? You make me work out, but don't let me eat? Silly girl. Don't you know the cameras add 10 pounds? You'll look like a manatee in your photos unless you lose weight. Almost forgot. Scarlett moved into Athena's mansion for her private training, while Naomi stayed home for school. At the moment, Scarlett was lonely on an empty stomach. I can understand how she's feeling, because I went through the same ordeal when I started touring at age 13. Scarlett decided to sneak out in the middle of the night to search for food. However, Athena was one step ahead and already locked the pantry. Hey, sis, you caught me in the middle of my midnight supper. <sighs> oh my god, this food is bussin'. Anyway, how's dad? I can't hear you. What's the weird noise? The sound of my pain and suffering. Watching you mukbang sure made it worse. Bye! And I'm sick of this food and this life. I need to find out how I can move to the city. Meanwhile, poor Scarlet could only sleep off her hunger, as she had to be up at six for training. Show business doesn't only demand talent and looks, but also the ability to handle being in the public eye. Sometimes you're a slip of tongue away from fading into oblivion. Media training was invented so we can learn to be public figures. That entire morning was spent on correcting Scarlett's posture, walk, and mannerisms. One more time, action! Hi, besties! Get ready with me to go to a ball! Stop! What now? Your accent. It's too distracting. Should we get rid of it? Perhaps tone it down a bit. It'll make her stand out. But we don't want too many risks. Risks? This is how I talk! Not anymore. That's enough for today. Thanks for coming in. Scarlet, of course, had no say in any of this. Now Athena's the one driving, and Scarlet's only in the passenger seat. Is she trying to make me a star or a slave? Can't she at least not look like Grumpy Cat and sound like a dictator all the time? Jeez, I have to learn strange stuff and change so much about myself. There's nothing wrong with my way to accent. What's all this for? Sis, everyone who wants to be famous has to learn everything you just said. And the people mom works with are all big names in the industry. So cool. Mom, to her, I only exist during business hours. I'm sure she wants the best for you. How about this? Ask her if I could come live with you. I could be your mediator. The responsible big sister side of Scarlet thought that's not a great idea, but the lonely teenager in her was craving some company. So, she asked and got Athena's approval right away. Naomi coming here is like returning to her natural habitat. This is amazing. Thanks, Mom. I can't wait to see this city. I don't have time to show you around. But here, take a cab and buy yourself something. Is it just me, or does she seem to get along much better with Mom?
I totally see it too, Scarlett. When Scarlett's image became much more marketable, Athena got her her first ever fashion photo shoot. But since this was Scarlett's first time modeling, she struggled the whole day, but couldn't seem to have any good shots. Let's try again. Remember, we want clean, athletic, smiley. Yeah, and she's giving dirty, tired, and paunchy. Everyone take ten. That's it! Look at all this stuff, guys. Isn't it crazy? Ah! What's wrong? Talk to me. I can't take this anymore. She is vicious. She doesn't give a flying crap that I beat myself up trying and orders me around like a puppet. This is draining me day by day. I'm exhausted. Naomi could only offer little comfort pats while listening to Scarlett's rant, but she's secretly thinking that her sister didn't know this was the life that others would kill to have. Little did Scarlett know, Naomi came to Athena immediately afterward. Mom, I want to be famous too. Make me. Sorry, that's a no. What does Scarlett have that I don't? I can do everything she does with a smile. You're only seeing this at a surface level. Scarlett's got that X factor. That's why I chose her. She's special, and you're not. That's it. She doesn't want that anyway. Who says? Show me. <sighs> Never mind. Naomi sulkily walked out when she ran straight into Scarlet. What on earth happened? You wouldn't understand. This time, Scarlet got a better grip of the job and became more confident. Then her followers grew quickly when she had a few viral videos. Those numbers translate to more high-profile promo campaigns and countless PR packages from brands. Most of her free PR stuff went to Naomi, though. Scarlet got recognized and asked for photos more often whenever she went out, and she gradually and strangely loved it. Athena seemed to be satisfied and not giving her a hard time anymore, and even flashed the first smile. Most importantly, there's more money to go towards their dad's treatment. Thanks, my darlings. The doctors could proceed with every necessary procedure, so I'll be discharged any day now. By the way, does your mother treat you well? She better. Soon you won't need to bend over backwards anymore. When dad gets better, this will all be over? Why do I suddenly feel kinda empty? Are you not happy to see dad get better? What? No! Of course I'm happy for him! Right then, Naomi saw something that could change everything. What's that? Nothing. Scarlet's on cloud nine to see all those times of intensive training, diet, and exercise finally bear fruits. Today, Athena even called her to her office. Maybe she wants to discuss the next trip, or plan to move to LA. I want to terminate our contract, effective immediately. What? What? You'll be compensated for this untimely breach of contract, which would be enough to cover everything, and- Hold on, why? You're no fit. Am I not getting more popular? What do you mean? You won't last. But it can still be a source of income. Why cut it completely? More profit for you too, right? Isn't that your sole target in doing this? Or are you afraid that I'll come back to bat you once I've made it? Watch your tongue. Regardless, we won't be working together. That's final. Tell me, are you scared people will figure out that I'm your daughter? Right, you never even came to see my frail bedridden father. I never needed a mother like you anyway. Then a smack landed on Scarlet's face. She held her left cheek, eyes wide open, and glared at the person standing in front of her with great fury. 